It was there certainly a light day at practice. Mm-hmm. They even cut it a little short than what we thought they'd go to is in terms of time on field. Uh, but there were some really interesting things that we're going to talk about here today. What, what did you have for best and worst? Yeah, let's start with the best for me. And I have to go with Kyler Gordon, who comes off of a very impressive preseason debut against the Bengals and then follows it up with arguably his, I mean, his best practice of training camp where he's able to get two interceptions on Caleb Williams. And it just seems like Kyler Gordon's always at the right place at the right time on the first pick. Look, Caleb's trying to throw a pass with pressure in his face, a little jump kind of pass. But I think Caleb's going to learn that, you know, these defenders, they get paid too. And when you test a guy like Kyler Gordon, he's one of those guys that can make you pay, undercuts the route, is able to take it back for a pick six. And you got some great pictures, Greg, of him celebrating, doing his little Spider-Man celebration. So that was the first interception. And then on the second one, He had his teammate, Jervon Dexter Sr., tip a ball at the line of scrimmage. And again, Gordon's just at the right place at the right time, able to capitalize on that tipped pass and intercept that one as well. So Kyler Gordon was definitely my best from today, making those highlight plays. And, you know, I'll get into a quote that he said later in the podcast, but that's my best. My worst, though, Greg, in that first offensive series for the Bears' first-team offense, I think within that six play sequence, there was three false start penalties. And that was something that the bears were actually getting better at limiting in these training camp practices, but it kind of reared its ugly head again in this practice. Like you said, a lighter day, but definitely wasn't a light day in terms of the false start penalties because those were coming out uh, in, in bunches there. So that would be my worst, but what do you got for your best and worst from today's practice? Yeah, it seemed like they had been cleaning up the false starts here as of late, but they kind of reared their ugly head. It was interesting because, you know, you had that comeback. You know, it felt like there was some sloppiness early on. I'll get to my worst here in a moment. Um, but because of the walkthrough feel of practice today, it was hard to really, like, take any of it, like, with, you know, um, some grand opinion on it. Like, they're clearly just getting into game week, a cer- certainly a short week mode going you know to kansas city here on thursday so you're just starting to really get close to the season where they're not dialing it up like they were two weeks ago at practice there's no question about it It, this is starting to throttle down quite a bit and we're starting to look ahead here to the tennessee titans uh but my best you know i I could go a few places we're going to talk about keenan allen we're going to talk about montez sweat and some of the different things we saw at practice today but i i honestly and this is something i wanted to say last thursday when practice got rained out And my best goes to the Chicago Bears organization because today was an open practice and it didn't need to be. Tomorrow is going to be an open practice. And the reason they are is because Thursday's practice, which was an open practice for, um, you know, the joint scrimmage between the Bengals was supposed to be the final day of open practice. Mm -hmm. And the Bears knew that rain was coming in lightning. There's a lot of, you know, you know worry that you know fans they can't put fans in harm's way they're liable for those people when they get on their property so you know they had to keep the fans out it becomes a closed practice and instead they choose to give fans the opportunity for two practices that one ticket turns into an opening for two days of practice here on monday and tuesday of course not everybody was able to make it it was certainly a light crowd that we're used to even at hallis hall Um, but at the same time, the bears did not have to do that. A practice got rained out last year and they did not make it up. And this year, you know, you just saw it all the way through camp, you know, from the acknowledgement of family fest, family day at soldier field from Matt Eberflus. Hey, we, we definitely want to keep doing this. And we're sorry that we weren't able to, there was a scheduling conflict with concerts at soldier field. And then Eberflus also acknowledging when they practiced on the far side of the field, away from the stands Mm -hmm. that a couple weeks ago, like, Hey, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to make sure we practice as close to you guys as possible. That's our bad. So now again, you know, a closed practice, it killed all of us that weren't able to go see that joint practice between the bears and Bengals and to make up for it with not only one makeup day, but two open practices for us. It just speaks to the culture that is starting to shift in Hallis hall, not just on the field, but in the front office and everything that surrounds Hallis hall. So, you know, us as fans, we can be pretty hard on the organization at times, and we certainly want a winning product on the field. But I do have to give, you know, Kevin Warren and Ted Cruz, who came over from Kansas City, and some of these guys, you know, that, you know, operate, 
you know, with the logistics and, and what they're doing for the fans. And they're certainly starting to keep a lot of us in mind. And so I'll be the first one to say, Hey, that was really, really cool. Of you guys, you didn't have to do it. And, and sincere, a sincere thank you to all of us that weren't able to be there on Thursday. So yeah. Um, and br- yeah, Braggs real quickly, before you get to your worst, like we were, I, I sat with you and a couple of people that were CHO supporters and I can tell you, like, they enjoy, they loved practice. They were into it. There weren't as many people that normally would be there on a, a regular scheduled, you know, open practice day. But for the people that were able to make it, like, that that was, like you said, a good move. A It's good optics from the Bears organization to allow whoever was available to go to that practice, see their Chicago Bears, because not a lot of people get that opportunity. So, again, the people that we were with, they looked like they were having a fun time at practice, even though it was a lighter day. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, some people might roll their eyes to that, but like, honestly, culture matters. And, it, and that's just not an on the field thing when you're changing culture. So, you know, I, I I'm starting to acknowledge the culture shift that's happening in Hallis hall. So shout out to them. My worst, uh, Roma Dunze dropped two punts to start practice in early warmups. You know, they're using the jugs machine. The ball didn't come off Tory Taylor's foot. He had the day off. Uh, but you know, they're rotating different, you know, punt returners and getting their reps in and he dropped the first one. And you know, that happens. They don't have pads on. They're just getting out on the practice field. So be it. I left it alone for a minute. And then he dropped the next one that when it was his next turn for a rep. And so like, if this is something that the bears are considering, you know, I've seen him put one on the, on the ground a week ago, he caught it off one bounce you know, off the ground. So that's three to my recollection that I've seen. He only had a couple punt returns last year. I know everybody's fixated on this idea as Roma Dunze as a weapon on punt returns, but I just, I'll never, I just don't understand it. To be honest with you, I get, you want a talented player in that spot. We all saw Devin Hester make his way all the way to the hall of fame, make a living off punt returns, but Roma Dunze, he didn't do it in college. Not he did have a punt return touchdown. He's certainly dynamic. I'm not saying he's completely incapable. I just think there's bigger fish to fry for Roma Dunze. You've got him, you know, focusing on so much. He did end up having a drop too on an easy, um, you know, crossing mm. pattern. Um, you know, Caleb Williams tried to hit him over the middle. He comes across, it hits him right in the hands, and he drops it. Like I just want him focusing on being the best wide receiver he possibly could be because we've seen here on Saturday you know, what he's, his potential ceiling is. And I think just because, you know, Keenan Allen and DJ Moore and, you know, are on the roster and, and Caleb Williams was taken ahead of him. This guy was a top 10 pick. When you bring in a top 10 wide receiver, I don't care what team it is. You, you're on a trajectory to be, you're drafted in the top 10 because Ryan Pulse thinks you're going to be a star. Not mm-hmm. just because you get along with Caleb Williams. And you if you watch the QB school breakdown of that little stutter step to the corner, Caleb didn't throw it to him. Like this dude has serious moves, great route running ability. Um, I think, you know, an understated speed to him. I know we all understand what he ran at the combine and what he did in college, but I just I don't think people realize just how fast this guy is because of how big he is. So he's got big things ahead of him you know, as a wide receiver in this league. And I just don't know. I just feel like we're wasting our time trying to make him a punt returner when it's just to me, um, there's other options there that can fill that role. Well, and too, Greg, like the thing is we haven't seen him actually return a punt in, in any of these preseason games and he's getting all these reps back there. So it's like, if you are realistically thinking Rome could be a possibility as your punt returner. Wouldn't you want to see him like in game action and not just the practice reps? Because obviously there's a lot of guys rotating back there who are getting reps as punt returner who have actually got reps in the game. Like Josh Blackwell being one of them, Deandre Carter being another one, they're getting these practice reps. Then they're getting yep. it in the game. We haven't seen that from Roma Dunes. So if you're actually considering it for this bear staff, you might as well put him in the game, but I doubt that we're going to see any starters on Thursday night against the Kansas City Chiefs. So it's like, what are they just taking a rep away from people, from guys that are actually realistically going to be the punt returner in the 2024 season? So again, there are these things coming in, but if you need him in a pinch to do that, like that's where maybe why they're giving him the reps now in practice, just in case, because I think now up to this point, because he hasn't gotten any reps in games, He's, he's, he's not going to be your number one punt returner. They have other guys that have been doing it. 
Yeah, no, I, 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 you know, I agree with you there. And I, and I kind of like what I've been seeing here from Josh Blackwell, yeah. who's kind of like emerged out of nowhere in a lot of ways. You know, I, it felt like Deandre Carter was the leader in the clubhouse to have that role. And maybe he still is, but it kind of feels like Josh Blackwell starting to push to take that job. So it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out. <laughs> 